wound marks on the palms and feet as from driving of nails into the body of Jesus Christ during his crucifixion, stab wounds to the body from a Roman soldier's spear, skin lesions to the forehead from a crown of thorns. Jesus' physical execution experience relived centuries after his death. Stigmata in Catholicism are bodily wounds, scars, and pain that appears in locations that correspond to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, on the hands, wrist, feet, and body of Catholic mystics and saints, but not strictly isolated to them. The phenomenon is found exclusively within the Catholic Church. The phenomenon has occurred over several centuries, but not in any particular order. Not all manifestations of the divine within the Catholic Church affected the Catholic elite, such as Francis of Assisi of Father Pio of Italy. Ordinary Catholics were affected too, some being fake. Whether such marks are fully penetrating wounds or just surface wounds is not important. What they mean and how they came about is the mystery behind how certain believers were stigmatized. In Ted Harrison's book, in his stigmata, a medieval phenomena in a modern age. Harrison describes that there is no single cause for the markings, whereby the marks of stigmata are produced on the human body. Equally, he found no causes in modern case studies that indicated such marks were produced supernaturally. Are these stigmata wounds pain, etc., genuine, faked, or medically triggered? The marks of stigmatism were not considered important by the manner they would appear, but by their religious significance. Early Medieval Period and the Catholic Church, 1048 to the Great Schism of 1054, Pope Leo XI, 25th of June 1002 to 19 April 1054, was considered one of the most historically significant popes in the Catholic Church during the Middle Ages. At the time, he was instrumental in the Western Catholic Church and Eastern Orthodox Churches splitting during the Great Schism of 1054. As the Pope in Rome, he was also made a saint. The Eastern Orthodox Churches would have no official position on stigmatism. The Western Churches saw matters differently. A much fewer number of Eastern Christians worldwide remained. The majority were Western Christians between the Greek East and Latin West. Religious Saints, Catholics, and the Stigmata St. Francis of Assisi One of the earliest non-biblical Catholic personalities, but a saint of a Catholic religious order, St. Francis of Assisi in 1224, two years before his death, was known to have been vested with a stigmata experience. In a painting by Giotto di Bardoni, or Giotto as he was known, a painter and architect, Saint Francis describes whilst playing during the exaltation of the cross his experience of receiving the stigmata from a seven-winged angel on a crucifix, transmitted to his hands and feet. He reported bleeding on his side, as if caused by the same lance that pierced Jesus' body. Witnesses such as Pope Alexander IV had remarked how he had seen these marks both before and after his death. A high percentage, probably 80% of stigmata experiences, are experienced by women. Others throughout the later years, such as Marie Ferron, 12th of May 1902 to 11th of May 1936, Saint Catherine, March 1347 to April 1380, and Theresa Newman, April 1898 to September 1962, all had their own experience. Catherine of Alsace France had her own experience captured in a painting, as Saint Francis of Assisi had, Catherine fainted when she was stigmatized. During stigmatization, subjects would describe how bleeding occurred haphazardly around wounds after the event. The bleeding would start, then stop intermittently over time. There have also been reports of tears of blood and sweating blood in some cases. The smell of scented flowers sometimes accompanied the bleeding. The fasting period which many took seriously, refusal to eat normal food, commonly called inedia, but constant consumption of the Holy Communion.
Some subjects believed that they could survive on the Holy Communion alone. The experience caused malnutrition, starvation, and sometimes death for some. After death, the stigmata would disappear. Christian mystics such as Francis of Assisi and Father Pio of Pia Trausina, 23rd of May 1887 to 25th of September 1968, experienced these phenomena. Pio of Pietrausina, a venetrated saint, had also received the stigmata in his younger years in 1918. Medieval examiners noted that bleeding from the sides of his body flowed and stopped intermittently. So too did the marks on his hands and feet. No infection nor dead flesh would be present at any time. Pio was one of the participants in the building of the hospital at Casa Salovio della Sofilenza, inaugurated on the 5th of July 1956 on a hill in San Giovanni Rotondo, a project funded by the Vatican. The hospital has become a well-known medical research center in Europe. Father Pio's popularity grew even more so after his death as a mystic and advisor to many. There were religious and non-religious medical doctors and others who tried to expose Pio as a fake, citing the use of carbonic acid on his body, but no such corrosive materials could be traced, nor the permanent scarring that would be expected to be present. After his death, his stigmata disappeared and his skin was found to be unblemished. The suffering experienced by the Messiah was described by theologian Ivan Illich in his paper, Hospitality and Pain. Illich describes in his compassion with Christ, is faith so strong and so deeply incarnate that it leads to the embodiment of the contemplated pain, religious faith and experience to associate oneself in the suffering of the Messiah? Theresa Neumann, the 9th of April 1898 to 18th of September 1962. Neumann also described her own experience as a German Catholic mystic and stigmatist. She was born into a large but poor family with little income in Bavaria. She became a member of the Third Order of St. Francis. After an awkward accident in her uncle's barn, she was left partially paralyzed after falling from a stool whilst attending to a fire. Several bad falls followed where she lost portions of her eyesight. She could not walk at all, so became bedridden. She said that in 1919, she lost her sight completely. On the 12th of March, she stated that she experienced a vision of Christ at the Mount of Olives with three disciples, along with the crowning of the thorns. Teresa would later after the vision experience the stigmata. She claimed that a small mark appeared on her right breast above the heart, which she kept hidden from people. Teresa stated that on the 23rd of April 1923, her eyesight was restored. On the same day, Teresa Lisieux was beatified, accepted as having arisen to heaven after her death in Rome. Lisieux was canonized as a saint in Rome. On the 5th of March 1926, during the first Friday of Lent, she reported having another vision of Christ at the Mount of Olives. Another dark mark appeared on her chest and disappeared a short while after. Teresa could not hide this dark mark from anyone as the blood was plainly obvious. There was very often an element of healing through faith in stigmatism. Two further cases of bedridden stigmatism in Marie Rose Ferron, a Canadian US Catholic mystic, and Martha Robin of France, having both suffered muscular and neurosis conditions in their early years, reported the marks of stigmata on their bodies. A science and religious skeptic, American Joe Nickel, described Theresa Lisieux as either a hysterical hypochondriac after a physician's test indicated that Lisieux's eyes reacted normally to light, even describing Lisieux's condition as outright fakery, the difference between normal wounds and the manifestation of the divine. Non-religious stigmata. A number of South American tribes, such as the Wararo of the Orinoco Delta, Venezuela, have a spiritual awareness in their own group ritual experience, with bodily manifestations which are expressed in subconscious self-mutilation, where they induce openings in palms of his hands. This is not a Christian experience, 
nor does it refer to the Messiah. Indigenous tribes in history have described a single superior being to whom they would conduct their spiritual rituals and their ancestors. Their celebrations to the superior being are important to the unity of the tribe and even appear in some cases in ancient cave paintings and rock art. There is much that is extremely strange about stigmatization. Experiences can only go to a certain point within Catholicism and outside of the church. It seems saints and spiritualists can experience a number of occurrences during the stigmata, seemingly excessive bleeding from the hands, eyes and other places, without experiencing actual blood loss from the body. No tissue damage nor infections have been present, and signs of dead tissue nor scarring is noted. The stigmata therefore must be accepted not as a personal punishment, but a divine manifestation of the Christ experience during the crucifixion. Medical physicians in some cases have tried to examine the patient. What little examinations have been conducted, the conclusions have not been able to move any further than providing standard reports. There are no definitive signs of personal injury.